Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back, watching, hanging out, chilling. I do appreciate it. Thanks very much. Hope you're having a wonderful day. I'm in Luminar 4 today, and I did a video yesterday. I'll put the link right there. And that video is about uh, how to fix underexposed photos, because a lot of times we take photos and we don't expose it properly and they're too dark, and you gotta fix it. So that's what that video is about. This video today is the opposite. This is for those times when you overexpose, part of the image is too bright, and you wanna pull back those bright parts to get a more balanced exposure. That's what this video is about, so we're gonna jump into it. If you're new here or haven't yet subscribed, please hit that subscribe button and the little bell to get notifications when I post new videos, which is pretty often. And um, give me a thumbs up if you like my videos. That helps me a lot, and I really appreciate it because that tells YouTube that you like what I'm making, so I appreciate that. Um, we're gonna jump through some filters here, and I'll show you how I generally handle overexposed components of a photo. Here we go. Uh, this was shot near my house uh, here in Austin years ago. Uh, I do see this spot there. There's a few other spots. This is from uh, my Nikon days. Um, in fact, I'm going to look and see. This was shot uh, December 19th of 2013, so a long time ago, over six years ago. Anyway, um, I'm going to jump into the filters here. There's a number of things that I generally do to fix the bright parts of a photo, and they're, they're probably pretty obvious, especially if you've used Luminar for a while. I start in the light tool because that's kind of where the heavy hitting stuff is. Um, you've got highlights and whites and that sort of thing. There is a difference between highlights and whites. I'll put a link there. That was a recent video as well. Um, what I normally would do is maybe start with just the exposure slider, right? I would just say, all right, I'm gonna go a little bit left and see what happens. Of course, as I said in that previous video about the underexposed photos, um, when you drag the exposure slider left or right, it's a global effect. It's impacting the entire photo. So the whole photo is getting darker. So just be careful because you've got to be able to sort of over, uh, not over, but you've got to be able to compensate for that decrease in exposure, perhaps by lifting the shadows, right, to bring, bring back some of that. And that's starting to work. Now here's the thing. There are times when you have parts of an image that are blown out and they're not going to be recovered. This one is probably one of those. We're about to find out. And how do you find out? So I would reset that. I'm going to come over here to highlights. I'm going to drag it all the way to the left. That did a pretty good job, actually. That's a pretty good job. Now, I'm not going to get anything out of this stuff in the far left here, but that's okay. It's actually, I think, um, let me back up. I used to think one of the reasons I did HDR so much was because I wanted the light to be perfectly even in terms of its distribution, and I wanted nothing where the shadows were too dark and nothing where the highlights were too blown. So a piece of sky like that used to really bug me, which is why I was doing HDR, because I take seven exposures, you blend them, and then, hey, guess what? It just totally, there's no blown out parts. It doesn't bother me anymore. You know why? Because it's real. Um, that's what the sky may look like when it's really bright to you. Um, and so it doesn't bother me. If it does bother you, um, there's, there's ways to fix it, right? So uh, I'm gonna do everything I can in this video to help you, but at the same time, you might have a photo where you just can't recover things, so it happens. Um, so you can try highlights, you might wanna try whites, but you know you can see it's not really doing anything here. All I'm doing is making my whites kinda gray and muddy. So I think on this photo, let me hit reset there. I think on this photo, pulling down the highlights is your best bet. Uh, you could maybe um, add a little bit of exposure reduction as well, and then maybe lift the shadows. Um, and you know, let me show you where we were. There's the before, there's the after. So it's not bad looking overall. Um, here, let me hit reset. Um, another option is the tone curve. Now I did a tone curve video if you wanna check that out up there. This section over here is the highlights. You can pull them down. I generally don't really like that. Um, I don't really ever do that. If you start getting too far, it's not at all like pulling down the highlights, right? So um, like on this slider up here, that looks way better than that, right? So I don't use the tone curve for that kind of stuff very much at all. And in fact, I don't really use whites and blacks for that kind of stuff. In the light tool, I would stay up here. I would probably do a minor exposure reduction, keeping in mind that it's global. I would drop the highlights significantly and maybe bring up the shadows. And you know, I think I have a decent uh, looking photo in terms of the light, certainly better than that. There's before and there's after. It is a little flat, it needs contrast and it needs some pop. Those are things you can do with other filters that we're not gonna really get into in this video. That's the light tool. The second tool that I would use would actually be AI Accent here in the AI Enhance uh, tool and that 
uh, is something I think that maybe you do. Um, I definitely do. I think of it as something that I use in a dark photo to brighten it. Or if it's a decently well lit photo, I drag it to the right to give it that pop, that oomph. Um, and it works really well for that. But surprisingly, it does a pretty good job on a overexposed sky. Look at that before and after. I mean, that's kind of amazing, my friends. Look, check that out. So I got back a lot of detail. So that's the thing about AI Accent. It's doing a lot of things. It's not just, um, it's not Smart Tone, uh, which is what was in the previous version of Luminar. I don't want to get into that now, but it's not that. It's also hitting the highlights and the shadows, and it's doing some color pop, and it's doing contrast pop. I mean, it is the easy button. And I gotta admit, I think that looks pretty damn good. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. And that's at 98, let's just put it to 100 because it goes to 100. Um, but even at 100, uh, that looks pretty good. Here's what I would probably do is come in and probably first do a little bit of light where maybe I take the exposure down a tad and put on the highlights a lot and then come get AI Enhance and get into this AI Accent and start pulling that up. And I, I don't know, I think that's a pretty good looking photo. In fact, I might go back and raise that exposure a tad because um, I feel like it's getting a little bit dark and it's a very vibrant photo. You can tell it, it was December as, as you saw on the date, but this is Central Texas, so we don't really get winter. So gorgeous blues, some gorgeous gold here on this tree. Um, and with just those two things, I went from that to that. Pretty impressive, I think. So um, that's probably what I would do to this photo. But there are still some other things that you can experiment with, uh, you know, for controlling these uh, overexposed photos. Okay, now I'm going to pop over to the Pro tab and Advanced Contrast. And guess what? I did a video about Advanced Contrast. I got a lot of videos, my friends. If you're new here, check them out. I got a bunch. I got, I don't know, 70-something videos on just on Luminar 4. Wow. I mean, it, it came out like two months ago. So um, there's a lot going on around here. Anyway, um, check out that video about advanced contrast, but I might would try highlights contrast, pull that up a little bit and try the balance and see kind of what it does. All right. So you see if it's going balanced to the left, it's getting way blown out, but I go balanced to the right. It's looking better. I mean, it doesn't look great. And that's what I'm saying is you're going to get the best bang for your buck by stacking tools, using multiple tools, light, AI accent, perhaps advanced contrast, but just looking at advanced contrast, again, there's a really bright sky. That's a much better sky, right? Too bright and much better. So again, contrast is creating that contrast. So it's by definition gonna increase the, the difference between the dark and the brighter parts within these uh, this, this highlight section, right? So I think it does a pretty good job, but it's definitely making the blue and some of the cloud definition pop which I like. So that would be something I'd probably use, as I said, in combination with the tools on the first tab. Okay, I reset that and now I'd go to adjustable gradient. I'd set orientation, maybe collapse this a little bit and maybe pull that down a tad, hit done. And then in top, I'd probably just bring exposure down, maybe try a contrast difference just to see if that helps at all. Doesn't seem to be doing much. Definitely pull the highlights down. Um, the only thing is, as you can see, I'm starting to get a difference between the top and the bottom because I dropped the exposure, I dropped the highlights, I increased the contrast. So to me, the top is starting to look a little faded, a little bit muddy, and the bottom still looks a little bit vibrant. So this is not a tool that I would start with. In fact, the Pro Tools, um, let me back up. I actually like the way the tools are arranged in Luminar 4. At first I was like, but wait, I wanna add my filters. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. I'm sure there's plenty of you that still feel that way, and that's cool. I felt that way for a little while as well. But the more I use Luminar 4, the more I'm seeing the logic and applying the filters in the order in which the, the tabs appear. So I would definitely start in the Essentials tab with Light and AI Enhance, etc., and then come to Pro. Uh, you probably would not get quite as muddy of a look here, but did it help with the sky? You bet. There's Bright, and there's a little bit better. Um, and the slider, you can see a little bit more definition in the clouds. Um, it's just a little softer, a little muddier. And so again, just be careful with it, but that is an option for you. And um, one of my favorite tools, adjustable gradient. And in fact, I, I gotta feel like I'm just a jerk. I keep saying, I made a video about it, but I did. I made a video about adjustable gradient. If you haven't seen it, you can check that out. Dodge and burn, start painting. This is a super easy filter. Um, I'm just gonna put it on 100 just so you can see the difference. And you just come in and start painting. Here's the thing. It's not doing highlight recovery. It's just trying to darken the area. So it's gonna darken all this stuff really well, 
right? You can see how blue that sky is getting because um, it's getting so much darker. It's also bringing up more spots. Um, I really needed to clean my sensor back then and I never did. But um, anyway, it's not going to recover highlights for you. So again, dodge and burn is helpful for controlling the bright parts. But it's, I think I said that in the last video, I use it kind of sparingly. I would use it for small sections. You might try it over here, but I mean, you can already see it's not really doing anything over there. Let me show you, um, right? Before and after. This blown out part is still just kind of blown out. Um, and that's the thing. As I said at the beginning of the video, there are times when, you know what, you just can't recover things and that's okay. And I have a couple of ideas for you if that's the case. One idea is to go to the Creative tab and get a texture overlay. And I'll come back and do a deep dive on texture overlay, but you can just add a texture. Um, and if you have a blown out sky and you really don't like it, and if the texture makes sense and or fits your sort of artistic vision for the photo, a texture is gonna cover that up because you're laying it on top. Just an idea, it's not the answer, it's a choice from a, a list of answers. How about that? That's one idea. Um, the other idea, and this is something I do sometimes, and this, I, I hate to admit it, um, this is actually what I used to think of, and that is make it a black and white. So as soon as you convert to black and white, the whole idea of blown out parts of a photo to me are kind of out the window because you're expecting blacks and whites, um, or I should say shadows and highlights, right? So you're expecting those kind of things. And so here, a blown out part of a photo doesn't look bad at all. It just kind of looks normal. Now. The photo needs work, it needs contrast, it needs you know a lot of work, but converting to a black and white is a way to kind of save a shot that may not be working uh, because of blown highlights. So again, not the answer, a choice from a list of answers. It's something I've done in the past. I hate to admit, but that was used to, that used to be my thinking around black and white was if I can't get it to work in color, I'll make it black and white. I don't do that anymore. I really like black and white. I've gotten a taste for it over the last year or so, um, but it's an idea. Um, and, and there, you know, this is Luminar 4, there are countless ideas. Uh, you could do a sky replacement, just put a new sky in. Just be careful, you're gonna have to also add a new image layer, flip it, invert it, and paint it into the water. So you, you got some work to do on a photo like this, but it's an idea. So lots of ideas, lots of tools, lots of fun you can have. And to me, that's the power and the fun and the beauty of Luminar 4. So that's it, that's kind of how I handle overexposed photos. wanted to make this as kind of a bookend to the uh, how to handle underexposed uh, photos video that I made yesterday or published yesterday. And that covers it, my friends. I hope that was helpful. Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. It's fun hanging out with you guys. I'm making a lot of videos and I'm going to keep making as many as I can because I love it and I like interacting with you guys. So thanks for coming, showing up. Give me a thumbs up, like I said. Hit subscribe if you haven't. See you soon, my friends. Have a great day. Thanks for watching. Take care and adios.